Hey guys, in this tutorial we're going to take a look at how you can customize IMD idols and performs with motions from the Content Store, Actor Core, or even your own custom imported ones. Within Motion Director, you can define these motions as loops, disruptible, and triggered, and edit them within the timeline to update them further. If you're not yet familiar with Motion Director, please check out the basic tutorials first. Let's start off with some basic idle and performs. The character on screen has an IMD loaded, but there are no performs yet in this case. To get started, let's go to Behavior Settings in the MD Behavior panel and press the Add Delete Behaviors button to customize the performs. Here you can add any motions to the available slots, in this case an idle and mode perform. I'll click and drag my idle into the respective slot and hit Apply. Then start MD to see the new idle in effect. I can do the same thing with Mode Perform, only this time I'll drag in three separate motions. You can trigger them in the MD Triggers window or use your assigned hotkeys. These motions blend together well as they're already set up to do so. Let's look now at how to edit performs in the timeline for cases where the motion matching is not ideal or too quick. In the case of this motion, you can see that it snapped from the idle way too quickly. So what we want to do is right click on both the motions and add them to the timeline to create a blend. Once both motion clips are in the timeline, you can simply click and drag them together to create a natural transition area for better timing. Keep in mind that you'll want to copy and paste the idle to also create the transition after the perform clip for flawless looping. Once that's done, you can click and drag in the collect clip track for the duration of the loop, then right click and select overwrite selected MD behavior motion. After that, you can see the transition between idle and perform is much better. Now, if you load in a motion that is already intended for looping, you'll want to ensure that you enable the loop condition. In this case, if we click on the perform here, the character will only perform once. However, if we enable the loop condition, the motion will loop indefinitely. Another condition to be aware of is the disruptable condition, which allows you to disrupt any perform with another perform or a directional command. In our first case here, I've made the sit perform non-disruptable, so when applied, any directional commands or other performs will be disabled. If I choose disruptable without directional command, that means that directional commands will not interrupt it, but other perform commands can. If I select disruptable for both performs, that means that they can both be interrupted by directional commands or another perform command. You can see a summary comparison between the three disruptable conditions here. These selected motions are all blended together already, like we saw in the last example. Finally, let's take a look at how you can set the trigger conditions for your performs. You can also determine whether a perform can be triggered from both an idle and another perform, or else just one or the other. In this case, the jump is going to be able to be triggered by both idle and other motions. The idle is only going to be able to be triggered by an idle, and the skipping motion will only be able to be triggered via the other jumping motion. Note that when the idle is running, the skipping will now be disabled. And when the idle perform is running, all other performs will be disabled and the others will follow the trigger conditions we set. All of these settings can be used to better define your character movements and behaviors to ensure the best combinations and blending results. That's it for this tutorial guys. Be sure to check out our complimentary motion mixer tutorial for more on the new improved motion director. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.